Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it a killer wave because that's what I believe we are in the beginning stages of. And if that's the case, it truly will be a tsunami that overwhelms the financial markets. So I want to share with you a video that I shared with my members two months ago. And the Dow was uh, over 1,600 points higher at the point at that point. And it talks about what happens when you have a fifth, an extended fifth wave. And we'll talk about what can happen coming off of an extended fifth wave and where it can correct to. But first, we're going to start off with just a quick update on what happened last week, and then we'll move into that video. OK, here's the ETF dashboard for uh, this was yesterday, actually, what I shared with my members. And it's uh, I've got a more extensive dashboard, but here's the highlight. And in the 16 sectors that I track up here, 11 S&P sectors plus some subsectors, there were 16. All 16 were up and zero down this week. Not a single one was negative. And the point I want to make here is, you know, just be aware just be a little bit cautious. I'm not going to say anything more than that at this point, but this is an extreme. Okay. The, the leader to the upside was energy up eight and a quarter percent. We had like how many sectors over five percent? One, two, three, four, five. And then when we look at the year to date, semiconductors leading down 40 percent for the year. There's, I think, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, seven sectors that are greater than 30 percent, seven out of 16. So a lot of been damage being done during the year for the year. Got a heck of a balance this last week. And when you look at the index ETFs, the leader of the upside was the NASDAQ 105.6 percent. Everything was positive. But over here, it's still down almost 31 percent on the year. All right, so that's the picture for the uh, for this last week with the ETF dashboard. Uh, let's take a quick look at the side by side of the Dow, the S and P 500, and the Nasdaq Composite. The Dow was up 1,448 points for three weeks in a row. The S and P was up 170, and the Nasdaq Composite up 538. It's interesting when you look, you look at the range within here. Clearly, the Dow range of this candle is is the biggest. And then the S&P 500 is in second place. And then right over here is in third place on the NASDAQ. They continue to be in sync with having taken out the June lows in here. But we are getting a pretty good little bounce or we have gotten a pretty good little bounce. Uh, the Dow up three weeks, the S&P 500 one week and the NASDAQ composite one week. All right, so that is the picture of the bigger term in terms of what's going on on the weekly view. Now let's get into the video I wanted to talk about an extended fifth wave. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about fifth wave extensions and the corrections that can occur after a fifth wave extension occurs. So let me start off. I'm going to look at the wave structure we've got, and I'm talking about cycle wave coming up off of 1932. I believe that we've got five cycle waves complete, and that assumes that the high that was made here in January of 2022 is going to hold. Okay, I believe it's going to. We're going to find out over the next uh, few months. Now, when we look at this, it's pretty clear to me that we had a very extended fifth wave as compared to cycle wave three and cycle wave one. Cycle wave one lasted five years. Cycle wave three lasted, uh, what was that, 24 years. And now cycle wave five, it lasted 40 years. Now, it's really, really interesting. Well, a couple of things I want to point out in here. Let me get rid of the crosshairs for now. I'll bring them back if I need them. First of all, I want to talk about how very similar wave five was acting as compared to wave three until we got to the end of primary wave three. OK, so from the from the beginning of cycle wave three back here in 1942 
And, uh, okay, now I need my crosshairs back just so I get the approximate day. So we were like March, April of 1942 to, it was actually January of 1960. We're talking about approximately 18 years, very close to 18 years to go from zero to the end of cycle wave three within this big, I mean, primary wave three within cycle wave three, okay? Well, back here, back over here in cycle wave five, the beginning of cycle wave five, August 1982, to the completion of primary wave three, which was January of 2000, 18 years. So here we are playing out 18 years for the first three waves, 18 years for the first three waves. Then what happened? Then all of a sudden things started stretching out. So uh, primary wave four over here in cycle wave three lasted two and a half years. And then primary wave five lasted three and a half years. So the to go from the completion of primary wave three to the completion of primary wave five and the end of cycle wave three, it was about six years. That same time frame has taken 22 years over here now, okay? So we did nine years for wave four here versus two and a half years, and we've done 13 years instead of three and a half years. So very extended uh, time frame. And one of the things I really wonder about is, is it because this entire wave cycle wave five was extending that it started getting stretched here. Now, there may be other reasons for why it's going on, but it's pretty clear that it happened. And then the other thing that's really interesting when I look at this is you look at the wave pattern that occurred for this primary four right here. This was an expanded flat, exactly what we got for primary wave four here, an expanded flat. And then we got this strong 13-year move, and we got a very strong move that came up here to January 1966. Then we had this very uh, complex, um, you know, I guess that's the best way to, uh, to describe it is complex. It was WXY. Y ended up being a big triangle, in my opinion, the way I've got it labeled out. Sideways move here for wave four that ended in August of 1982. All right, so now what are we going to get here? We are at the end of super cycle wave five. Okay, so now what are we going to get? And, and it's really unclear, but here's what I want to talk about. Extended wave five. When you have an extended fifth wave, there's a couple of things that could happen. Number one, the, the immediate correction or the very first correction is usually pretty sharp. So what does that mean? Well, there's a couple of ways it could go. Here's a zigzag pattern, and here is a another zigzag pattern, or it could be an expanded flat type of pattern here. Not sure why I'm getting the blinking in the in the screen, so I apologize for that. But uh, what what you look for in here is two possible scenarios. And let me get my marker up here. This first scenario right here is where the entire correction ends at the low of wave two within the extended wave. Okay. The other possibility is that the first A wave is very sharp and it ends at the low of wave two and then the entire correction actually comes down and ends down near the fourth wave of one lower degree, which is exactly where this would be right here. Now, I know these are huge dramatic moves because where are we talking about? Where's the bottom of primary wave two? This is 19, after the 1987 crash. This is down here, you know, 1,600 to 1,700. That's a long way away. It almost seems infeasible to me. Now, I'll tell you, there haven't been very many instances that I'm aware of 
where the extended fifth wave concept, I've seen it play out in stocks, but in terms of seeing it play out in cycle waves like this, the only one I can think of that I've seen is to go back over here and take a look at cycle wave two. And let me just, I'm going to zoom in and we'll take a look at this right here. So cycle wave one had one, two, three, four, five, and it had an extended fifth wave. Where did the first move down A come down into? It came down very nearly to the bottom of wave two within that extended fifth wave right here. And fairly quickly, but it wasn't like it happened in three months or something. I mean, every one of these bars is a month, but every one of these bars is a month too. I mean, this was, you know, fairly decent move. Where did this go from uh, June of 34 to February of 37? Okay, so three year move and then we come back down and then but then look, we get the, you know, like A, B and this C wave worded wave two end. Wave two ended right down in here in the midst of the prior fourth wave of one lower degree right here. So here's one, two, three, four, five. And that's where wave two ended. So there's an example of what can occur as a possibility. Now, I mean, we're, we're I know we're talking about a lot of points, but I find, uh, you know, I find the wave structure really, really interesting when you look at it and you look at what occurred in this third cycle wave, the way the pattern played out, the time frame up in here to the, the end of the third primary wave and what we were doing until January of 2000. And then we've gotten stretched out since then. But now, if we start to head down, what kind of vicious move are we going to get? Now, I, I, lay, I lay this out as a possibility only to talk about this concept at a high level. And of course, what do we have to do? We watch the wave structure because if this is a zigzag like this, then this is going to be five, three, five. If this is a zigzag here, it's going to be five, three, five, but the five waves will be much more dramatic and much bigger. OK, if this ends up being a flat, this will be a three wave move down, then a three wave move back up, then a five wave. So it's really a matter of what do we get and what kind of degree do we get? Do we get, you know, does it play out? OK, so the, these are possibilities. To me, when I look at the overall uh, wave structure of everything of this entire move up from uh, 1932, it's actually July 1932. I mean, it sure looks like an extended fifth wave uh, since uh, August of 1982. So we'll see if it plays out. Everybody's talk, been talking about inflation that's been occurred that occurred back here, 40 year inflation, 40 year bond market, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we'll see how the stock market's going to play out. OK, I thought I'd pass that on. I find it very interesting. But of course, the most important thing you know, short term is, you know, what's happening with the wave structure here over the in 2022 into 2023. And uh, that's what we're going to continue to monitor every day and every week. Hey, everyone have a uh, great rest of the day. I'll talk to you on the next video. OK, that's it for this weekend. I hope you found this video helpful and kind of puts the uh, perspective as to where we are in the long term cycles for you and where the possibilities are as we move forward. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website, check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.